Good morning. Greetings, everyone. It's Pastor John here from Napanee Baptist Church. It's good to be with you. It is Wednesday, March the 2nd, and we are halfway through the week, and I'm glad you could join me. And we have had these visits with the pastor for many, many months now, uh, about a year and a half, and even when things are uh, easing now in our area and in our province, uh, they're going to be lifting most restrictions in the near future. We're going to keep these visits with the pastor going. It's just a good way to stay connected where we can read the Word of God together and be encouraged together. So if you have your Bibles handy, if you can turn to the book of John, the Gospel of John, and we're on chapter 17. And our reading for today is just going to be a few verses. And this is just before Jesus gets arrested. And uh, this is in what is called his Passion Week, the week before his trial and crucifixion. And so let's pick it up in chapter 17, and we're going to be reading from verses 1 to 5. And here Jesus is uh, finishing up his discourse at the Last Supper with the disciples. So it says, After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. So here, even Jesus himself is, in this little passage, these few verses, Jesus is proclaiming, really who he is. He is deity. He is the Son of God. He was with God, he says, before the world began. I was in your presence with the glory I had with you, Jesus says, before the world began. So people who think Jesus was just a good man or a good teacher or he was a prophet, a lot of people believe that he was just a prophet. Well, he's not claiming that here about himself. He is saying that he had glory, just as God has glory. If, if he was some kind of a, 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 just a prophet or a good teacher, well, then he wouldn't be given glory. So he is the Holy Son of God. He is the second person of the Trinity. And he is divine. And then he says, Father, at the first part of uh, the passage, verse 1, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. And so Jesus came to earth. He, he lived and he died. And his, main, his sole purpose was to bring glory to God through it all was to glorify God, and then he would be glorified. The book of Hebrews talks about Jesus, the joy set before him, endured the cross, despising its shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He has accomplished what God gave him to do. He accomplished salvation. He has endured all of his suffering. He's endured the cross, and now he is in glory. He is glorified, even as God is glorified. And, and then John says in verse 3, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. You can't know God without knowing Jesus. There are some people who discount Jesus and they say that, well, Jesus was a created being or he was uh, the archangel or he was a uh, 
like I said, a good prophet or a good man, but they don't worship him as God. Well, here it says that you have eternal life and that you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ. They are, they are together. They are one. They are a package. And the Holy Spirit is right along with them. You can't have one without having all three. And so, may you be encouraged today. May you be encouraged that if you know Jesus Christ, you know the Father, you have His Spirit, and you know that God is going to be glorified no matter what He does. He was glorified with what Jesus went through in order to accomplish salvation, and He's going to be glorified in our lives uh, if we serve Him and we seek to please Him. And uh, we're committed to him as Jesus was, as Jesus is our great example. God gets the glory. And even in this world, eventually, God will get the glory. No matter what it looks like now, things look very out of control, especially with this war in Europe. And yet, God is eventually going to get the glory. And uh, he will be the victor. And we can trust him uh, because of that. Because we know in the end, God will be glorified. He will be vindicated. He will be praised and acknowledged. So, be encouraged. And keep looking to him. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And so, let's pray together and just commit our day to him. Father, I thank you for today. Thank you for each person watching, person watching. And I just pray, Lord, that you will draw near to each one, that you will encourage each heart and help us to realize in a fresh way that everything that happens in our lives and in this world will ultimately result in you getting the glory. And we thank you for our Savior. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for what he's done. He has set that great example of coming here and dying for us and suffering the way he did, knowing that that would bring glory to God and that someday he would be glorified too. So, Lord, we just pray that you'll bless each one, meet each need, help us to be able to persevere and endure through the uncertainties of this life and help us to be confident that you will eventually receive all the glory. So we just commit our day to you now. I thank you for each person watching and we love you. We uh, acknowledge who you are and we give you praise and glory. And we do that in the precious name of Jesus, our precious Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great day. And we'll see you again here on Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye.